This is Phoenix 4. Confirm inbound. Alright, dark star starts on BTR. Confirm. Solid copy. 100 over 100. Hey, it's me. Um, yeah, so we're essentially starting off from where we uh, went last time with the UH1H in DCS. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, we've got ground power. Uh, everything's kind of turned on. When we got ground power, a uh, master caution light came on telling us, hey, guess what? External power. We don't give a shit about that. Reset. Boom. It's off. No one cares. Nice. So uh, we have grand power. Next thing that we're going to want to do is actually, you know, turn on the helo. So with power flowing through the system, we're going to want to look up back up at our overhead console. Uh, we're going to take a look at our exterior lights here. Because uh, those are what we're going to want to turn on. Make sure that when we talk to the ATC, they know who's talking to them. So anti-collision lights on. Those are strobe lights. You'll be able to see the, the strobe here. Uh, position lights are, as you can see in the bottom right corner, or will see in the bottom right corner, are our uh, little, uh, little, little, little position lights, the, the red and blues uh, that show up. <coughs> you can set those dim or bright. Uh, since we have external power, we'll go ahead and set that to bright. We don't really care about uh, power draw on the system. And why not? We'll also go ahead and set those to flash. So those lights are now flashing. If we didn't want them, we could turn it to its neutral position off or, hey, have it steady. Uh, flash, I believe, takes a little bit more power, uh, so I usually save that for if I'm doing an external power run. Cool. So we should be able to be mostly seen now. The last light we're going to want to turn on is our landing light. So on with the landing light, and we're actually going to go ahead and leave that stowed. If uh, you wanted to extend your landing light or stow it, you can um, use this little trigger here. So uh, if you toggle it forward, you'll see our landing light extends. If you pull it back, you'll see it retracts. And uh, to turn it off, you just return it to its neutral position. Neat. Uh, so with our uh, power done, our lights on, we're going to want to probably talk to the ATC, which requires our radio. Now, the ATC is functioning on, I believe, four different radio channels. Uh, so we can talk to it on VHF, we could talk to it on uh, ultra high frequency, and I believe we could even talk to it on FM if we wanted to. So we might as well go over what all these things do. So the VHF comms, very high frequency comms, are all of your comms between uh, 116.0 116 and 149.975. Uh, you can change the channels uh, by twisting these top uh, parts, these top knobs. Uh, essentially, this left one will increase it by increments or decrease it by increments of 1, and uh, this right one will increase it or decrease it by increments of 0 0.025. You also have got these two little knobs. Uh, the little knobby parts are for powering up the radio, so if you uh, right-click it, it'll turn on to power. If you left-click it, it'll turn off. You want to make sure that it's turned on. You also have got a volume control, so uh, right-clicking it slides that on, left-clicking it lowers it. We want to make sure that we have as much power or volume as possible. Finally, to make sure that it works, we're going to want to press the COM test button. And hey, we can hear it. Boom. That's great news. So we're going to go ahead and uh, turn this to channel 134 for Kutaisi Airport. Or Kutaisi. Boom. Power. Uh, if uh, we wanted to talk to them on the UHF, uh, there's a couple ways you could do that. I believe it's set to one of these presets. I just don't remember which one. To select a preset, you'll take this left knob, push it uh, four as far as possible, and then right click and left click this knob to turn it and select the preset you want. You've got between one and 20, and those can be set beforehand in the, uh, in the editor. You also have got the manual position, the center position on this, uh, this selector switch, which will have the radio read whatever is uh, indicated here, as opposed to a preset. You also have got ground, uh, guard transmit, which will automatically transmit on the guard frequency. Uh, useful in case you've crashed and need rescue. You don't know where else to transmit. When it's set to manual, uh, you've got three knobs which affect uh, the frequency that you're transmitting on. Uh, for the first frequency, you've got uh, this uh, leftmost knob. This is going to be the uh, hundreds and tenths by increments of one. So. Uh, roll the mouse wheel, you can see that goes up. So the uh, the ultra frequency is everything from 200.00 to 39.995, I believe. Yeah, so uh, this next knob affects your ones, of course, increments of one, surprise, surprise. And this next one is uh, everything else by 0 0.05. So 399.95, fantastic, that's the highest transmission. 
This next, uh, this next knob essentially tells how the radio functions, either off, it doesn't function at all, transmit, receive, it both transmits and also receives, transmit and receives, and it also receives the guard channel, or ADF, uh, so it will function as an automatic direction finder. We'll get into that in a separate video. It doesn't work on this helicopter anyways, the uh, UHF, uh, so don't worry about it. All right, uh, also FM, the best radio in my opinion. So the radio, the FM radio, has a very small amount of uh, range. It only can transmit and receive on 30.00 all the way up to 75.95, I believe. Yes. Uh, so as you can see, uh, this dial is the tenths by increments of one. This dial is the ones by increments of one. This dial is the tenths by increments of one. And this guy is the hundredths, or sorry, yeah, hundredths by increments of 0 0.05. So only two positions for that guy. Uh, the other knobs are the squelch, and ho 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 up. Turns out Dum Dum passed me, kind of messed up on the whole squelch knob thing. So the squelch knob has got uh, three positions. The leftmost one there is dis or disable, which means that the squelch circuits are disabled. Uh, you won't get a squelch. The middle one is car or carrier, which means that the squelch tones will operate uh, as you'd like normally uh, in the presence of any carrier. So if you receive a transmission, uh, you will have the normal squelch. It does not mean an aircraft carrier. The last one is tone, which uh, only opens or unsquelches in the presence of 150 CPS tone modulation, which is essentially a modulation of the frequency by one frequency, I assume in this uh, case, is 150 CPS. Hope that clears some shit up. Good watching. You can set the overall volume with this middle knob, and on the right here, you can set how it functions, either off, transmit, receive, which is transmit or receiving on the chosen um, frequency, retransmit, which means anything that you receive on this frequency, you will also then transmit it. It's good for boosting someone else's signal. And also homing, which uh, will have your marker beacon here uh, show you where a transmission is coming from. Very good for navigation. Next up, uh, we have our um, our radio selector switch. We've already gone over that, so we'll just set it to three. As I mentioned, is the VHF. Cool. So we've got our nav set up to the ATC. We've got our lights so that ATC can see us. Last thing to do is to do a little controls wash. So throttle all the way up, throttle all the way down. Just make sure that we have that full range of motion. The friction is how we like it. We'll also look up at our rotors, add full collective. We want to see that trailing edge come down as it's doing and neutralize it, make that trailing edge come back up. Last up, we'll want to do a, a wash with our uh, cyclic. If your helicopter blades are positioned like fore and aft as it is, uh, pushing the stick left should have that trailing edge come up and pushing it right should have that trailing edge come down. Pushing it fore and aft will do absolutely nothing. There we are. This is due to something called gyroscopic precession and we'll go over it in uh, the flying supplement. So everything seems to be working fine for our rotor positions. Uh, next up is to call the ATC. So we're gonna go ahead and hit our radio trigger again. This time select ATC, Kutaisi, and request startup. Kutaisi. Grand, nice little, uh, nice little uh, gentle wind. So we've got clearance to start up. The way that we do that in this helicopter is next to this, or on the bottom of this gearbox, there's a little engine start button. So if you hold that down, your uh, engine will start to ignite and move. There's a couple things we're gonna wanna watch as that happens though. This uh, DC voltometer, if we're taking a battery power uh, start, if it's below half, there's a chance that the helicopter will not start. Um, you have a bit of wiggle room, but uh, the halfway mark is usually how I like to, uh, to mark it. The other things that we'll want to watch are the rotor and engine uh, RPMs. We'll want to make sure those are uh, increasing. They shouldn't hit quite hit the green or the yellow, uh, but they should lie, I think, just around this area here. So we're going to want to watch for that. Our torque should come up. If it ever passes the red, we'll want to stop immediately. The exhaust temperature will come up. Again, if it passes red during the startup, we'll want to turn off, uh, start the startup, or stop the startup bleh, immediately. The final thing that we'll want to keep an eye on is this gas producer. So as soon as we start holding down the button, that gas producer will start to raise. At about 20%, well, we'll probably go over it as we do it. So let's go ahead and hold that button down. 
you can hear the, the system starting. Even though we're connected to ground power, you can see quite a significant uh, decrease. So as it raises past 20%, the helicopter blades start to spin. 30%, you get oscillations. At 40%, we can stop holding down the button. There we go, and we have a successful engine start. Not so surprising, external power, very easy to start the engine. Uh, so with the engine started, there's a couple things we'll want to watch. Uh, the DC generator light should go out. It means our DC generator is fully functioning uh, and actually you know, generating power. Hydraulic pressure, we want to make sure that uh, that normalizes. So that uh, disappears. Oh, we're good. Transmission oil pressure also goes out. DC generator still isn't functioning, so that might mean that I've messed something up. We're going to want to take a look up here. We are good. It's likely because we have the external power in our system in that case. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. If, uh, when turning on the engine, if that does not pass 40% um, on the gas producer before 40 seconds has passed, cut the engine immediately. It's a failed start. Uh, set yourself up with ground power if you're doing a battery start or potentially even reload the mission. Uh, something's gone wrong. You can also try to uh, identify where the problem is and, and fix it, uh, but hey, you do you. Cool beans. So with the rotors spinning, uh, we're going to go ahead and um, disconnect our, uh, our external power. So we're going to go ahead and tell the chief to do that. Head back to Interphone. Ground crew. Ground crew. Uh, ground power. Off. Turn off the ground power. Copy. So he turns off the external power. Ground power is now off. We see it off. DC generator light still turned on, which is a little interesting. Oh, there it is. So it's turned off. Perfect. There it is. So the DC generator wasn't kicking in since we had the uh, since we had the power, the external power. Um, fantastic. So keep that in mind. I often do battery starts. You could probably tell. Next thing, uh, we have power. It is uh, draining, and we obviously don't have any of our flight controls. You can see the ASI is off. HSI, uh, HSI is off. Marker beacon wouldn't work. Um, Fuel quantity, zero. Transmission oil doesn't obviously doesn't work. Uh, engine oil obviously also doesn't work. The uh, pressure, sorry, gauges. So back up the overhead, we're going to turn our inverter on. You can hear it kick on. And we're also going to turn our uh, backup generator, our starter generator, from start to standby, since you don't need to start the engine anymore. It's already started. Cool beans. So we can see all the uh, master creation location, all the master creation lights are off except for the IFF. Um, to fix the IFF, it's not functional in the simulation. Aside from in multiplayer, all you do is right click uh, this knob here, this master knob for your IFF. I won't go over this panel. It largely doesn't work, just this knob. Cool, so inverter works. You'll see our ASI is kicked on, our HSI, the flag has gone away. Uh, these pressure indicators have kicked in, fuel quantity is up. So we're all good to go. Um, we haven't gone as long as I'd think, so we might just extend this video out a little bit and turn on the navigation, uh, or turn on uh, the flight tools. So we're gonna look up at the overhead console, find this little knobby, knobby knob that we didn't touch with the fuses, turn that on, or push it uh, aft. So that's our radar altimeter. Uh, that's this boil right here. It's a alternative altimeter to our barometric. Uh, it's a little bit more accurate, but it, uh, you know, it bounces off uh, off the ground as opposed to measuring air pressure. Uh, in order to actually turn it on on, uh, you're going to take this left knob and start turning it right with the mouse wheel. Uh, this is actually also uh, you setting your uh, when your low flag turns on. So this is uh, feet in times 100. So right now, if the L, the low marker, is set to 1, uh, this low mark will turn on if uh, your altimeter is showing anything less than 100. This right knob is also a two-function knob. It sets your high. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and move that all the way up to uh, maybe 500 feet. And also, if you push it in, it functions as a test. So I want to make sure that uh, that radar altimeter is showing at or as close to 1,000 as possible. It's 990, so just keep in mind we might have a bit, uh, we might have just a little bit of error in that. So that's fine. Cool. We're neat. Radar altimeter on. Uh, compass not on. Next thing we're going to want is our compass. Uh, you may notice that we have our uh, compass, our HSI but we also have a magnetic compass. Uh, the things to note are the synchronizing knob, which is this little right knob here, and the X up here. 
So since we see that we're facing roughly 150 degrees on our magnetic compass, we're going to turn the synchronizing knob using most real actions until we get up to 150 or as near as possible. You'll see this X start to disappear replaced by a circle. You want your goal is to have half an X and half a circle. If it's all a circle, you've gone too far. If it's all, all an X, you haven't gone far enough. So we're going to go ahead and get uh, circle over X at roughly uh, one, looks like about 142, one, four, or sorry, 152, 153. The other things that you can um, uh, affect here is your setting, uh, is your heading set bug. All this is is a guide which will show a, a heading. You want uh, that ideally to be touching its little echelon tip to the top there. Um, so just set that heading knob where you want and steer so the bug touches tips with this <laughs> this 12 o'clock uh, <laughs> knob. You have also got uh, two little arrows here. Uh, this skinny arrow is your ADF, so anything that your automatic direction finder, which we'll get into in a later video, uh, that'll show um, the directione uh, that that is in relation to you. And the fat knob, or the fat arrow, is the uh, VOR. So any VOR station that you're uh, clicked onto with your ILS, or not your ILS, or your NAVCOM, that'll show you where that is. So we'll get that into that in a later video. Uh, you can set whether or not the ADF uh, needle is uh, kind of its own little thing, or you can also slave it to your VOR, so only have VOR navigation. I generally leave it to ADF. I don't find the arrows too, uh, too overwhelming. So you might think to yourself, sweet, shut up, let's go fly. Uh, there's one last thing we need to do, and that's to actually run up the engine. Right now our uh, throttle is at idle. It should have been at idle when you started the helicopter. If you're having failures, uh, check and make sure that your throttle is at idle. So the way that we're going to fix this is we're going to slowly roll up our uh, throttle. And we're going to watch this RPM gauge as well as the uh, torque and the exhaust gauges. Make sure that everything sits in the green or at least below the red. So exhaust is kind of normalized. That's good. RPMs have normalized. That's fantastic. Uh, torque raised briefly but then kicked back down as our um, uh, tail rotor uh, kicked in to, to uh, reduce some of, the, uh, some of the strain on our main rotor. Cool. And the last thing is to close the cockpit doors. Uh, left control, sorry, right control and C. Click. Grand daddy -o. So there it is. We have everything we need to pretty much just fly a visual approach around this airfield. But hey, why don't you stay tuned and we'll go over um, we'll go over just some example uh, navigation in the next little video. I will see you then, or I won't see you at all, maybe. Hmm.